les on le liode deja de semiote de mas Robert Nivel po infemi si trepis al hir mi sacrifis is eleiv it nums de devon spans pise e patia they read out loud the order of the day from that mass murderer Robert Nivel to inform his troops the hour sacrifice had arrived and we must not think about leave great plans that were months ago great plans that worked months ago but this is modern war things were always changing always moving we had to keep up and innovate and that's what did not happen at Shiminde Dam also known as the Nivelle Offensive the second battle of the iron which is now called the Nivelle Offensive was disaster in every way possible even though the French had tanks on their side he planned a massive 10 kilometer breakthrough but Billy got one kilometer and for the first day alone the French had lost over 40 hundred thousand casualties the Germans held and added more defenses and countermeasures from 1914 so they were dug in pretty well they let some reserves go to Arras to deal with the British offensive diversionary attack there but they still hold the line because they were well dug in on both fronts Nivelle said he would call off the attack if it failed within 48 hours but he didn't and let it drag on let the offensive drag on for a whole month until the 9th of May 1917 and the French politicians did not expect this especially when they slacked Joffre for Nivelle. Nivelle had been anticipating this offensive all year he was confident in this offensive and the tactics he knew six months ago at Verdun would make a breakthrough so Nivelle was an artillery officer so he had spent a lot of time in that field he's also made a method using the artillery to make a narrow corridor and the infantry would rush forward in the columns of the artillery so the infantry had to be always rushing forward by passing German strong points and knocking out German fortifications but the infantry wasn't keen on this a mutiny was brewing as the army was slowly breaking down from Verdun and many other field offensives thus far 6 a.m. the French attack many field offensives thus far another key element was surprised but Nivelle was not discreet and wind was caught on by Max von Bohun Max von Buren. So at 6 a.m., the French attack, supported by 5,000 big guns from Soissons to the Rim, his men were ready. The elephant in the room, the first French tank. Newton tanks in general, the Snyder tank. So, unlike the British, who had a year to get their tactics down, the French couldn't copy them because their tank and doctrine were very different. The Snyder's a1, the Snyder A1, the Snyder CA1 had the engine at the front, so the red hit caused fire and explosions with gasoline everywhere. And this wasn't their first rodeo. The Germans' tactics and strategies were to direct every small artillery piece, mostly the FK96 cannon, and fire all incoming tanks. Also, there were ditches and potholes, extending trenches, more things that I covered in the tank of air special but basically everything to slow down the tank so since 1916 the Germans had everything in place for counter tank measures and most of the tanks most of the Snyders were blown to pieces most of them broke down and for five days the battle had the and the rest of them broke down for the five days of the battle they had the main manpower with 53 divisions which totaled to 1.3 million men most of them were in reserves for the breakthrough that was supposed to happen also in contrast to the German 21 divisions near or around Schemende Dam commanded by Crown Prince Wilhelm he was well aware of the offensive actually and planned all winter for it so the offensive was basically doomed before it even began plus to top off that they had to cross the Ain River, then some ravines, then they had to get through some barbed wire, charge up a hill where the Germans were dug in pretty good. And to make it worse, 
they knew they were coming, so they were ready. And they had machine, and they had machine gun nest and pill boxes and every fortification that survived most of the bombardment because also their artillery they were hitting a reverse slope so most of their artillery would harmlessly go over the slope so RT didn't really destroy them or any fortifications as well also lastly when a Frenchman got up the hill he was an easy target because the blue was contrasting against the sky so if anything blue moved the Germans would just shoot it so they had brought up all their field guns and everything so they brought up their field cannons and were ready for the French so it basically became a French Somme the French equivalent of the Somme and he had to call off the attack within the five days because he didn't have a choice the mutiny was basically brewing and already on the way so and also they were running low ammunition so it was the bloodiest battle for the French in that army in it was the bloodiest battle for the French in that part of the war the spa Two days later, a battalion of the 166th Regiment staged a demonstration on the 20th of May, the 128th Regiment of the 3rd Division and the 66th Regiment of the 8th Division, 18th Division refusing orders. Individual instances of insubordination occurred on the 17th. At the end of the offensive by the 28th of May, mutinies had occurred in the 9th Division, the 158th Division, the 5th Division and the 1st Cavalry Division and by the end of May, more units from the 5th Division, 6th Division, 13th Division, 35th Division, 43rd Division, 62nd Division, 77th Division, 117th Division, mutinied, revolted, occurred on the 21st and a mutiny and revolts occurred in 21 divisions in May. A record of 2,700 men, French soldiers deserted in 1917 and the offensive was suspended on the 9th of May. The army, politicians and public were stunned by the chain of events and on the 16th of May, Nivelle was sacked and moved to North Africa. He was replaced by more considerably more cautious Pitan, with Foch as chief of the general staff, the new commanders abandoned the strategy of decisive battle from one of the repercussions and defences to avoid high casualties and to restore morale. Pitan had 40 to 62 mutineers shot as an example, introduced reform to improve the welfare of the French troops. It had a significant effect on restoring the morale. The French tactics of assault brutal de continua suited the German defensive disposition the German dis defensive disposition since much of the new construction had taken place to re on the reverse slopes the speed of the attack and the depth of the French objectives meant that there was no time to establish artillery observation posts overlooking the Antilly Valley in the area where French infantry had reached the ridge Tunnels and caves under the ridge nullified much of the destructive effort of the French artillery, which also hampered by poor visibility and by the German air superiority, because this is still bloody April, which made French artillery observation aircraft even less effective. The rear edge of the German battle along the ridge had been forced with the machine gun posts and the German divisional command choose to fight the front line and a few of the Igrif division which needed to intervene the battle in the first few days. Lelet Shaw and now another quote by Louis Spartas. This is actually the second half but I think the first half and this half kinda go how I wanted it the first part and then this is the second part. La lecture de la lecture de si absurdis patriotique in effluent pass enthusiasm à quanté en quanté lini 
de Molleyes Listi, que le soldat qua in indifinit qu'un atia tribel minis un terrible, un terrible mort in vain in un sacrifice un tili. Reading this patriotic nonsense aroused no enthusiasm. On the contrary, it was only demoralizing to the soldiers, who had nothing but another terrible threat, an awful death, in vain, and a useless sacrifice. Now, when I was um, doing defensives, I had not thought about this before, but the defense of Verdun, aka the Magnum Opus, is actually one of the rare French um, defensive battles. I was going to do it on fort, but then it crossed me. The only defensive battle really that French did and the only fortification they actually fought in made basically offensive and defensive kind of irrelevant, irrelevant since the Magnum Opus is the only defensive thing they did. So I may come back to this, I may just do a separate defensive but I don't think the French have done a defensive battle most of the were offensives and then the mutiny because you just read an all-out decisive victory offensive from Robert Nivelle so Pitan did not order anything from 1917 and from there it was basically the 100 days offensive and the Allies winning the Entente not the Allies, Allies is World War 2 well you could say Allies in World War 1 but it kinda makes the Germans sound like the bad guys so that's basically it. I kind of stumbled into my own trap. So, hello. So basically, I had to do frontiers. Well, not about all frontiers because that's offensive as well. So there's no really offensive and defensive. The magnum opus is the defensive. So look out for that one. So I hope you learned something. Yes, this is just offensive, never offensive. So. Yeah, learn something.